So I thought today we'd start taking a look at this Nixie Tube display board that I picked up recently. Uh, came from a local electronic surplus uh, place. Uh, it's an interesting little board. I've begun to reverse engineer it somewhat. I'd like to actually get it back up and operational. As you can see, there are you know, seven Nixie Tubes over here. Uh, there's seven 7441s here. Those are Nixie drivers. They take a BCD input and they uh, convert it to, uh, you know, one of ten outputs to light the various, you know, elements inside of the Nixie tube. Uh, we can see the board's had some repair work. There's a newer 7441 here on the board versus the older ones here. It's all kind of, you know, Jelly Bean TTL logic. There's nothing exotic on here. They're just all standard 74XX series devices. Uh, it's a neat little board. It uses a standard 44 pin, looks like a 0.156 card edge connector. A uh, couple of things we can note here are I've it's got uh, VCC and ground up here. So we've got ground and VCC coming in, and you can see that VCC is a little bit shorter. So it makes the ground connection first, and then the 200 volts or the high voltage comes in on this pin down here. Uh, I've, I've got the pins labeled up, uh, and we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, so it's an interesting little board. It was a part of something called a, a Weathercron PC8. It seems to be the time display module. As we'll see, it's just set up to display hours, minutes, seconds, and tens of seconds. Anyhow, it's a neat little board. I have pretty good faith that it's going to be operational. Uh, there might be a bad 7441 on here. But anyhow, let's take a look at some pictures and walk through the board. So just a different view of what we're just looking at with the uh, part numbers, uh, you, you know, right side up so we can see them. Again, as I said, pretty standard TTL logic, 7410 up here, 7475, uh, the 7471 drivers. Uh, what appears to be a date code here, 42nd week of 71. There's also a date code down here, 19th week of 76. 48th week of 71. So I think we can say this board, maybe it, it's going to be from the 70s. We've got uh, 45th week of 75 over here, so it gets us up to 1975. I think we can ignore this device it's a replacement and I suspect this one might be a replacement as well uh, some of these you know appear to be date codes but they're not uh, there, there is markings on the board so these are 7400s so these national devices here and the ceramic packages I believe JM is military grade I could be wrong about that but there's three 7400s here you know, they've used copper on the board to label devices 7402, 7400. So it, it's, you know, interesting board. You can see again here the seven tubes. And if you look here, you can actually see one of the colons here. So there's a little wire mount, a little wire loop that's got two display uh, things in it. They look to me like really early LEDs. Uh, I haven't tried to put a, a diode tester on them. Uh, another person who was looking at it thought these were miniature uh, Nixie lamps, or neon lamps, miniature neons. I don't really know. We'll, we'll get a closer look at those in a later photo. Uh, looking at the tubes head on, it's kind of interesting. So again, we've got these little, whatever they are for colons, it looks to me like there's a little square die inside of those. I'm guessing there are really early LEDs. I remember LEDs in this package. What's interesting here is they've taken two of these, they've soldered them together here. They soldered it to a lead and then dropped it down the back. And so it makes this little loop. What you can't see in this one, and I don't think I've got a good photo of it, is there's actually three leads going to the board. So there's a middle lead that comes off here down to the PCB. As if these could be blinked individually, maybe AM, PM indication or something. There's one over here uses a decimal point. So we have hours displays, minutes displays, tens of seconds, seconds, 
and and tenths of a second. So this can display, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds, which is interesting. Uh, again, it just screams to be turned back into a clock. That's what it was originally. You can see some damage here on the PCB where our resistor has melted down. We've got some better pictures of that coming up. Another look at the board uh, where you can read the labeling a little easier here. Uh, you know, it's a PC8 time display from Weathercron. It was patented. You can see there's labeling up the edge connector here that gives some hints about what the pins are used for. We've got the high voltage that comes in. It snakes along here. And there's actually a cap on the high voltage on this side. Uh, and of course, this pin hooks to ground. And the high voltage comes to a resistor sitting here that's a replacement. And there's uh, carbon left on the board from the resistor before, and I think potentially lift traces here that have ended up with the jumper link here. There's actually a jumper link down here. Uh, counts divided by 10, do you want, uh, I can't tell if it's five counts per second, or if it counts 0 0.5, 0 0.5, rather than 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I don't really know, but it's a little jumper link option. It's kind of interesting. Get another view where that jumper link is in there. You can see a little more where I believe a trace has been blown off the board here, potentially when the high voltage failed. Uh, been unable to find a schematic at this point, uh, although apparently the Weathercron company still exists in Atlanta, Georgia. I found a phone number for them. Another view of the board. You can see again the colons here and the uh, decimal point. little closer look at the damage that happened here. So the high voltage comes in, the plus 200 volts through the first dropper resistor. And then there's a kind of resistor you can see between the tubes here, one per tube, to limit the current to the tube. So it's interesting to me they have a resistor to limit the, you know, you know, the overall current, uh, and then an individual resistor per tube. That, you know, so that'll give you a, a little better equal brightness across the tubes. Uh, there's a transistor here that has to do with high voltage. At least that's what I'm guessing. HV here. Again, don't know. I think as I pointed out, what seems to be a trace. So it looks to me like the high voltage comes up through the resistor and drops over here. And there seems to have been a trace that ran around there. And when this resistor melted down, you know, the original resistor, it took the trace out. And so somebody remove the copper from the board and just put the jumper link in. So, you, you know, it's not a bad little fix for what it is. Uh, don't think I got a good view of this center colon. You can see that there's the three pins I mentioned, and the center pin comes up to between the two displays. You know, the LEDs are, are, are miniature neons. Now, uh, you can see there are B5860 tubes. Um, I think they're all 5860s. And I'm not sure there's a whole lot more on that picture to kind of talk to. The other side of the board, you get kind of another view of that center lead that comes up to here, which to me means you could light these two dots in that colon individually, most likely. And again, somebody's repair work here on the blown off trace. You know, not a bad little repair for what it is. More little looks at the board. Uh, we get in here to the 74157s, which, if I'm multiplexers, almost believe they're multiplexers. I'd have to look it up. Uh, it gets interesting and in that on the back of the board, as, if, as I recall, there are uh, multiple inputs for hours. Let me bring up Excel here. And sorry, I've got the, I didn't size this ahead of time to kind of show you what's going on here. So I've captured 
really the markings across the board here in an Excel spreadsheet. And there's pin 35, pin 35. It's got two sets of hours inputs, A, B, C, D, E. This almost makes me think this is going to be uh, a binary incoming value because with five bits you can get from zero to 31, which in 24 hour mode will usually display zero to 23. There's two of these. It kind of makes me wonder if hours are multiplexed. It's not super clear here. You can see we've got the seconds A, B, C, D input. Uh, for the most significant digit, I believe here, uh, this would be the pins down here. Yeah, seconds, most significant digit. A, B, and C for the most significant digit, I believe. These are actually labeled B and C prime on the back side. I'm not sure why. The uh, least significant digit, this would be the 0.1 seconds, it looks like, the seconds, and the tens of seconds. Uh, which really only needs to count from 0 to 5, so 3 bits would be sufficient to do that. Of course, the pin here that we see here with the voltage for the Nixie tubes, the 200 volts coming in. Uh, there's a pin over here labeled 12 hour. Uh, on one side of the board it's labeled 12 HR, on the other side it appears to be labeled 12 HRB. I'm not sure this is probably for setting 12 or 24 hour mode would be my guess. Not 100% sure of that. This is actually labeled off here. It's just hard to read, which I've captured here, which makes me think that might be a display inhibit. Often the pin on the opposite side of the board seems to be labeled OI, which to me would also be output inhibit. I'm not sure. So it's going to take a little bit of, of trial and error here. I'm debating whether to sit down and just uh, reverse engineer a schematic for the board. It'd be a fair amount of work, and I might have better luck just hooking this thing up and playing with the various contacts uh, across the back of the board there. Uh, let's jump back into the photos. You know, it's a neat little layout. Uh, I'm guessing it was maybe hand taped it's from the era when it was most likely hand taped machine layout for a board this simple would be inhibit you know i think it would be expensive i don't know how big a company this was at the time uh, what i'm seeing online says the weathercron company in Atlanta, georgia has between two and eight employees you know it's hard to say Again, you know, on the Nixie tube side of the board, you can see where the original resistor burnt here. It's been replaced. They've got it up off the board for some heat dissipation. Uh, and then where that trace was blown out and has been jumpered. You know, just kind of a neat little board. Uh, kind of another close up view. This is an MPS, something I assume transistor, uh, potentially a high voltage switching transistor that might be being used for, you know, if these are neon colons, I, the more I look at these, the more I'm convinced they're LEDs, but we'll, we'll find out as we dive deeper into the board. You can see here where the current limiting resistor for this tube burned up, delaminated the uh, fiberglass on the board. And it's been replaced with, you know, it's like an exact replacement resistor. Uh, these are 22K. It's a pretty typical current limiting resistor. Uh, me, when you're working around Nixie tubes. Other side of the board again. You know, just similar layout here. The high voltage comes in. Gets distributed to each resistor and then each resistor to each tube. An even better view with a little colon indicator, so just a little wire loop soldered, the two devices soldered together and soldered back to the board. Again, you can kind of see that center lead that comes up to here. It would, I believe, give you individual control. Notice that the little cross member on those 
is opposite. Whereas on here, they're on the same side. And I believe that little crossbar, I'm convinced these are LEDs. As my, in my, ID, or my memory gave you polarity, although that does look like it runs off to potentially high voltage here. So maybe not. That might actually be running up here on, to the high voltage. So maybe they are micro neons. But it, as I remember in this package, that gives you an indication of polarity. And with these, you would be able to turn, you know, there's a common in the middle. You'd be able to turn one or the other or both on. So again, it might be able to display AM, PM. Uh, and of course, the single one in here for the tenths of a second. Yet another view, again showing the third pin coming up and the loop through. I've done some cleaning of the board. It really needs to be probably toothbrushed and some alcohol to get this remaining dust off. Beautiful little board. Uh, I'm looking very forward to seeing if I can bring life back to it. So I grabbed some kind of close-up photos here of the labeling. I'm guessing the board's from 1978, honestly, August 78. So these may have just been old stock, you know, a 48th week of 71, you know, from something else that was used in the board. Uh, you know, 78 would definitely get us into the era of LEDs. Though I'm not convinced those are LEDs. I, I know I keep flip-flopping on what those, the colon and the uh, tenths of a second indicator are. But I just, I've just noticed this in the photo here, so I, I'm, it's got to be August 78th. Uh, from Weathercron, Atlanta, Georgia. Of course, it's trademarked. It was a PC8 time display. Uh, Weathercron apparently manufactured uh, equipment where you could call a phone number and get the current time and, and weather. Uh, stuff like that. So this could have been part of one of those systems. You can see some of the labeling here, most significant digit, you know, the A, B, C, D, uh, 200 volts, high voltage, minutes, A, B, C, D, E, and F. See, it's just kind of interesting. There's a really good snapshot of the back of the, the board here where the labeling really shows up well. Uh, you can see here... So pin 15 on the connector is labeled, pin 10 is labeled, pin 5 is labeled here, it's hard to see, and pin 1 is labeled. So they actually did number these. It's 1 through 22 on this side. Uh, it's SEC here, so seconds, least significant digit, A and B. Uh, C on pin 20, the C20 took me for a while, but it's the C on pin 20 and D. So this to me is the, the least significant digit of the seconds, which would be the tenths of a second. Kind of another look at the labeling that's on the board here, Weathercron, Atlanta, Georgia. And again, you get a really nice view up the side of the card here. And there's where that B prime and C prime were labeled that came in on... Now this is kind of hard to interpret. Least significant digit seconds, A, B, C, D... This appears to be the second, so the one second, two second, three second, uh, C and B prime, and A and D are on the other side of the card. And then we get into minutes. You can see in some of these the soldering is still nice and shiny after all these years, even though the tin plated copper is kind of corroded and you know it just shows its age. Again, those same markings up the side. Well, I shot a lot of this same photo. I thought I deleted a couple of these. Time display. I believe this may be a daylight savings time pin that comes in here. Perhaps they add or subtract an hour. I don't know which you you know which would happen here for daylight savings time. There's a 12 hour B on this side, and it's labeled 12 hour on the other side. I'm assuming the B is part of the the label. Don't know that for sure. But I'm assuming that's for setting 12 or 24 hour uh, mode. Uh, the 59 and 32, I have no clue 
but those are our diode one is of course sitting across here uh, this is that OI on pin 4 I'm not really sure what that indicates another view of that same piece of the board the diode we just mentioned on the other side and here's the other 12 hour input and it might be 12 hour A right there that could be a lowercase a looking at it oops let me edit that in here I think that probably is an a 12 hour a And yes, I realize you just saw my full name there, if you looked, is what it is. Our resistors are labeled here. You know, it's just a cool vintage board. There's the back side of the board where that current limiting resistor for this tube uh, had its little meltdown. Again, you know, luckily the traces on this side seem to have survived okay. Nice little battle scar on the other side of the board where the resistor burned. Caution, plus 200 volts high voltage. Yep, there's 200 volts coming in along here. Notice that there's not a whole lot of clearance here. To these, you know, these are going to be TTL level logic signals, 0 and 5 volts. So it's just interesting that right in the middle of the board is that 200 volt high voltage trace. This is the picture I was trying to get to here. So this is a really cool little trademark logo. This is vaguely familiar to me. I almost think I've seen an actual device that looked like this. I believe there's a mercury thermometer. That's what's indicated here. A clock. So hours and minutes barometer perhaps I think maybe barometer and uh, humidity or vice versa and it's got this little telephone here a little you know it's got the little keypad on the telephone you know it's a little old style desktop telephone the cord to the phone and again you know the bit of reading I, I did said that you know they manufactured gear that you could call a phone number and you know the current time is the temperature is get that kind of stuff via voice uh, so it's just an interesting little logo to me with the you know the old school weather kind of stationy thing here and the telephone added on to it uh, and I'm assuming weather cron is weather uh, chronograph perhaps again don't know it's just a neat little logo just kind of a nice little thing to find laying on the board uh, here's that jumper that I mentioned earlier for counts divided by 10 5 or per second oh I, it, now it jumps out to me so we can take the least significant second option we can take the number of incoming counts so it must be coming in at 100 hertz maybe and divide it by 10 it was coming in at 50 hertz divided by 5 maybe the significant digit second option counts divided by 10 or 5 I don't know it'd be interesting to play with that jumper if I can get the thing powered up and actually doing something not completely clear to me what this might do it might be much clearer to somebody else out there counts divided by 10 or 5 per second Uh, I kind of did, did a couple of these with backlighting behind the board so you can kind of see all the markings a little clearer through the board. Uh, you know, the little logo here is a piece of yellow tape on the back of the board that's that yellow shadow there. But it kind of, you know, it's just a little easier to see through the board. And again, the back side of the board kind of backlit again. It just makes things kind of pop better. 
Uh, you know, I think it was this photo where I noticed the BNC Prime. It actually looks like O1 there, now that I see it. And not OI, although it could be an I. Hours pin 10. It's not pin 1. Pin 1's up here. Don't know. Yet another view of the burn area. And you know, Q1 here, high voltage. So that transistor is being used to switch perhaps high voltage to I don't know what here. I'll have to look closer at the copper. And I think that brings us back or brings us all the way through the photos I took. Uh, in a future video I will power the board up and do more work to reverse engineer it. And go ahead here again and kind of take a look at the pinout as I've been able to decode it from the markings on the board. You know, the seconds, least significant digit, tens of seconds, or not tens, ones of seconds, and then the tens of seconds here. Minutes, minutes, this is confusing to me, uh, and hours, hours. It really makes me wonder if it supports dual time zones, perhaps. Uh, and where these, you know, A, B, C, D for seconds, uh, you need eight or four bits to be able to count zero to nine. So for the least significant digit, you could be counting zero to nine, zero to nine, incrementing the seconds. Again, the one seconds can go from zero to nine. The tens of seconds go from zero to five, which is why you'd need three bits. However, for the minutes and the hours, Minutes can count really from 0 to 59. And as I said earlier, with 6 bits here, you can count 0 to 63. So you need 6 bits in binary to count 0 to 59. And I'm guessing this is raw binary and decoded by the logic on the board to the two tubes. Same thing for the hours here. You need to be able to go from 0 to 23 for a 24 hour clock and to do that with 5 bits you can count 0 to 31 so that'd be enough bits there to do it I'm really guessing this thing could support dual time zones and uh, hmm so maybe it could be 12 hour or 24 hour for this stack and 12 hour or 24 hour for this stack uh, I'm guessing off will blank the tubes. I don't know if the WWV input signal here is perhaps re well, there's no counters on the board, so it wouldn't make sense. It's using that as a time base. It could maybe, I, I don't know, be being used to blink the colons, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing the daylight pin again is daylight savings time and maybe the OI pin is what selects which one of these to be displayed. That would be interesting if it's a dual time zone. And that's the only explanation I have for this is dual time zone. And of course the power and ground and the high voltage end. So anyhow, I think that covers everything I wanted to say at this point. Uh, Love to hear your comments or thoughts on this. Uh, if somebody happens to know where I can get a schematic for the board or even the complete system it was in, I'd love to take a look at it. So I guess I'll wrap this up here and we'll talk soon. Bye.